it's clear that no, we, 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 we do. Let's we gonna continue with no, with this kid. You say this kid, he's light skinned kid. No, 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 like what happened to this kid? You know, uh, but he has a do rag. Smart kid said. came with a do rag and everything. You know, and so I said, I pulled him beside. And I said, his name is George. I pulled him beside the George. Look, look, man. They take the do rag off, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Well, man, Professor Tyson." I said, "No, no, you don't understand something. See." You and your crew, you and your boys. Now, I, now I know all of you. I know this your students. I know you good kids mm -hmm. because I grew up, you know, in some really rough neighborhoods. And I think that my vision is still twenty twenty when it comes to being able to tell the difference between danger and mm -hmm. just some kids hanging out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So consequently, I see you and your crew, and I know that you good kids. But you walking there, you walking down the streets of, uh, of Somerville, and the people that will cross the street. When they see you coming, two or three, you coming, and figure that you danger and figure, you know, that you're up to no good or whatever, are the same people who are the teachers, the administrators, the staff, the, you know, support staff and everything at this institution that you're going to. And so you need to think about that. Because at the end of the day, all you're doing is, you know, all you're doing by taking the durag off, you know, and presenting another side of yourself is you're increasing your chances you know, for success and everything, and you're forcing people to look at you the way that you really want them to see you for the purposes of utilizing what they have to facilitate your passage to success. Well, obviously, you know, and it really doesn't work. change who you are. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm not really advocating. I'm not. Well, I am. Let me let me let me do it this way. I tell people all the time. It's kind of interesting that I grew up in the South Bronx for real. But I grew up with my South Bronx for real is different than the South Bronx that people understand. Mm. I grew up in South Bronx at the time that we were totally integrated. My next door neighbors were white, literally in the projects. They were actually white, the last scene. Mm -hmm. Next to them was the Garcias. Our whole building was totally, we had blind, crippled crazy in our in our one little six-story building. You know what I mean? And all the past and project was totally integrated for a number of reasons. Because um, Adam Clayton Powell did this. But right over in Harlem, is all black. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might go out to parts of Long Island was just getting integrated. So there's a difference between somebody who's black that grows up in a totally integrated situation and somebody who grows up in totally black situation and somebody who grows up in a in a, in a white situation. Right. Black sure. Situation. So now when you now the people that you're talking about is a totally I can't make any analogies to, to, to this reality I just finished speaking of, but it may be this in their thing because they're they're seeing whatever they're seeing on TV, whatever they have you. They're trying to identify, they're trying to be, if they could perceive that as black in their head, they're trying to be, there's something happening in that school. And so, and I know some of them, I used to live in, I, used, I don't know how some of New Jersey, but they're, they're, there's something happening in that area that they, they want, so for some reason, at this particular point, junction in their development, wanted to identify more black than they should be. I don't know what it is, but well, there's see, something me, happening. I'm there's not saying happening. it wrong. I'm just no, saying, I'm not saying it wrong either. I'm, 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 not, saying, I'm saying I see it differently because, see, I just think that it's a question of style. See, I don't see, I don't, the thing is, I don't know if it's necessarily associated with whether they necessarily associate it with blackness. Maybe, and if they do, it's only on a surface level because, because it, you know, because if the, if all of a sudden it became everybody took the do rags off, mm -hmm. and you didn't see young brothers wearing them. Everybody else would stop. Okay. See, that suggests to me that it's much more style. This is interesting, and you know, then it, and and you know, and sort of you know, a, a a micro subculture, not even subculture, a micro subculture, because it's so whimsical and changeable. It'll mm -hmm. change at a moment's notice. That's right. You know, see, when you have things like, for instance, the idea of um of uh, like, for instance. African Americans still consume twenty five percent of the Scotch whiskey. Okay, okay, man, you know, they're sold in the United States mm -hmm. far above the proportion of African Americans, the general population. Okay, that kind of thing has stayed stable for the longest kind of time. Okay, so there's something about the culture and something about sort of the uh, you know the uh, experience experience that brings that about. Yeah, when I, you I, see I, something I, that doesn't last that long, when you see these things that move back and forth and everything, where it's here today, gone tomorrow. Now, folks will turn, see, because there was a whole period, like, you know, 
at least 20 years that I could think of, you know, from maybe the late 70s, from maybe the mid 70s into the you know early 90s, when you didn't see a do-rag anywhere. You might yes, now yes. what it is is somebody might, you know, you know, put one on in their home at night. But see, I remember growing up in the late 50s, early 60s, yeah, and Dr. seeing Cap cats is. with the do-rags and all the other kind of stuff and everything. You know, and then that disappeared for a while. And then what it is, at some point, I can't put a finger on exactly, at some point it came back. I remember seeing, you know, there was a moment, uh, you know, the late 60s going to the 70s when one of the worst things you could do is wear that stocking cap in public. That's right. That and everything. Right. Yeah, see, and right. then what happened is it came back. So see, something that that's transitory, you know, suggests to me it has very little to do with you know, identity of blackness, although I'm not going to discount that it might have part of it, but it seems to be more of a, a of a style question and something transient as opposed to other things that we could point to that are rather, you know, long lasting, you know, that you can tie to elements. Like, for instance, we are very, but not only are we very product oriented, but we're also very um, loyal to products. Brand, brand loyalty, yes. You know, we have brand loyalty and that's something that has been Bred, you know, and through experience and through any number of things, you know, into, you know, you know uh, sort of mainstream African-American culture such that it reproduces itself, you know, and you can see if you don't see it in this item or this trend, you see it in that item or that trend. You know, we're brand loyal. Um, so, the, but, but, but to go back to what I was trying to tell this young, this young brother, what I tell a lot of the young brothers on campus is that you, Max, it, it, you are going to be black at the end of the day. Okay, that has nothing to do with your blackness. Okay, and why not identify with and why not garb yourself and clothe yourself and conduct yourself in a way that is more conducive to your success because okay. you need these folks to facilitate your passage through here. I and have so a solution. Why not I have a make solution. Make that passage easier for you. I don't want to cut you off, but I ahead, have a solution. Ahead. It comes from my experience as, as because I, in some, I, I work with young people too, you know, but. Um, Here's the thing. Why not suggest, since they're students anyway, say, look, we're going to have an experiment. I need you guys. I need you guys. We're going to do this experiment. Come on now. It's research, you know. No credit, <laughs> but it's research. Here's what we're going to do. Here we go. <laughs> right? Next semester. Beginning of semester. Not now. Beginning of semester. I need you all to go shopping around. Everybody go shopping around. I need you, everybody, to get at least, at least three different fedoras. Three different fedoras, because for the whole next semester, our crew, including me, we're going to wear fedoras. We're going to replace do-rags with fedoras. Mm -hmm. And I don't wear hats. <laughs> well, what I, what I, what I, I don't, I'm not saying, I, I, well, I, I, you understand what I'm trying I, I, I'm I'm saying, for, saying. I'm sort of I'm being facetious for six years, but I'm just trying to say, I'm trying to say, there are trend stars, because remember, what, what is um, what's, uh, Run DMC? No, no, Adidas, right. how did Adidas get on the map? Right. Right. Run the MC. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right now, Joe, look, I have let me show you something. Let me show you something. I see I see you got you got you got you got you got, you got you got new balance. I had the I got the original maroon new balance was made in America. Like this is like when was this this was like in the eighties, early eighties, early eighties. I got it from a super from a um a flea market, English town mm -hmm. flea market. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first people to wear these new bows because they were, you know, flea market stuff, whatever. I don't know how they got them. But I'm one of these, nobody had them. Then all of a sudden, Oprah picks up, she likes new balances, right? <laughs> okay. Now, you know, everybody's into Jordans right now. Let me show you a pair of sneakers right now. I had to get, because I'm an old man, and my doctor told me, because of technology, I had to get these. These things are called hookers, H O K A. These are hookers. Mm -hmm. Old man sneakers, well, I don't know. They're hookers. $150, this as much as whatever have you. But they have some sort of technology in here that's beneficial, whatever have you. The toe box is great. I'm not, not doing advertising for them. But it's, yeah, a are, it's okay. <laughs> but it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful shoe, sneaker, whatever you want to you want to call it, right? And I love the color and everything like that. Now, I'm nobody. But if I if I had a whole bass a whole group of people wearing storm wear the hookers and whatever have you, that might start a trend. 
True. You know, just like this, whatever have you. And then that trend may or may not be picked up. But as soon as it gets picked up, does that become total brand loyalty? Because I, I'm, again, in South Africa, I mean, they, they love Johnny Walker Blue for some mm -hmm. strange reason. I don't mm -hmm. think that's a great whiskey, but or whatever it is. But it, it's you know, status, but, it's, it's belonging, it's sense of community and everything. You know, you know um, I, was, I, I was telling um, uh, somebody a couple of weeks ago that... Um, uh, there was a guy that um, in back in the eighties at the club I used to hang out at, and um, he was all about uh, demonstrating. He was living well above his means, mm, and he uh, but, 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 but see, it was you see what what it was. He lucked out. What it is is he got into a he was, a, he was older than me. He's at least ten years older than me, so you know maybe even more than that. But anyway, he was lived on the east on the east side, but he was in a building that got locked into rent control. And so he was living in an apartment that the market value was probably four times the rent he was paying. And so what that, and he, I mean, he's locked into this ridiculously low rent even in eighties. And so what it did was it enabled him to spend money on That's other right. kinds exactly. of things because if he was paying market value for that apartment, he'd be eating, you know, on the three day chicken plan, you know, meat today, bones tomorrow, you know, and the, and the feathers the third day, but that's you know? And so he, he he got locked into. I remember one day he came in talking about order, and I was tending bar at the time. I used to tend bar at this place on Friday nights and Saturday nights. And he came in and asked for some a um, uh, cr uh, 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 crown royal, and I'm like, what? Ooh. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, crown royal and everything, and I'm like, what? You know? And but what it is is. Now see, I now see the thing about this. It's, it's, it's been so long since I've you know since I've drinking had alcohol that I even. But he had the name twisted upside down. Mm -hmm. Is what it was. Yes, yep, that's what I'm about to say. Yeah, okay, yeah. To, see, it's so, <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out what it is he's saying, Damn. and so he points at she behind a bar, and I look, friend. and I realize that he that he picked up on his name, and he's drinking this stuff, which is top shelf, so he's mm -hmm. paying, you know, a premium on it, and he doesn't even know the name of the damn thing. Yeah. But that's that's a whole other that's a whole <laughs> other status thing. But remember also, I wanted to just just for a little bit with that this rent lock lock in. But even that, I mean, um, remember when we went off the gold standard in in seventy one? Because there used to be a formula, at least and I I knew in the seventies, the early well the sixties, where you wouldn't pay more than no way you would pay more than than I think it was a, a quarter. But let me quarter. But, but let me let me just throw it up to a third. Okay. Let's, let's go to, let's go to the late seventies. A number a third of your rent. Mm -hmm. Would be well, a third of your salary be paid to your rent, right? Right. That's if you had a salary, whatever. Right, right, right. But the point is, once that went off that gold standard, and then, then, then the bankers started doing what they're doing. It's just what we have these days. Now you have bankers. It's insurrection with the bankers. People are finally getting, getting let's say, this economy is fake. These people have manipulated us since since the seventies, and now it's coming to a fore. But the point is. He could live the way he lived because he had that disposable. But everybody should be able to live that way. That's oh, the yeah. point. That's the point, but we, but somehow we allowed. Which let's, let's go to something else. I wanted to talk about something else, but let me go to something else. Harry Belafonte said famously said, you know, the people said, what happened in the six? You know, what happened? And we still haven't known. Harry Belafonte famously said, well, we blinked. You know, meaning that you know the the boomers just dropped the ball, or whatever it is, whatever they, whatever it meant. I don't think we blinked. I think we really just totally failed. And we failed because what happened, we did not get out of the way of the next generation. Don't don't get me I'm not going to go through the whole crack academic and all, all the 80s or whatever have you, whatever have you. But I'm just trying to say is that we never moved out of the way to groom. In other words, when when you was doing your Panther thing, how old were you again? 16 is when I joined. I was 16. And we, when you would assume leadership at what age? 17. And you were you were you were doing you were doing international things at what age? 18, 17, 18, 19. I I, I told somebody else I rest my case because my thing is that where is we why don't we where's our twenty year olds where's our twenty nine year old I'll even push up a little bit further where's our our thirty five year olds that we have moved out of the way and let this thirty five year old let this twenty year old become the leaders that they that they we know they can become you can't tell me that uh, that that you at 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 uh, at twenty two is smarter than somebody else right now at twenty two so how come how come we, we still got people in the way not not allowing. The, the 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 new leadership, if you will, to to, to, move, to move along. I just want to know. I've because heard that you know, I I've heard that critique for years. I'm not going to dismiss it. Let me say a couple of things. Number one, 
I think that the difference between the 60s, because see, not only did leadership come up, you know, because see, what happened was young gay leadership, you know, folks like the, um, what, what did they call themselves? The Gay Activist Alliance, okay, pushed the old, you know, uh, Mattachine Society and uh, the daughters of uh, of uh, Billy Idol, so whatever the, the lesbian, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 organization was, you know, that emerged from the fifties and everything. You know, the Gay Activist Alliance, which was basically young black, you know, Stonewall pushed a whole yeah, bunch yeah, of folks yeah, yeah, to yeah. the side and everything. You know, um, the you know, you know, the confluence of uh, the drive on campuses for black studies, yeah. the uh, you know, the death, the death of you know of Malcolm, uh, I'm sorry, Martin Luther King pushed a whole bunch of young people to the fore because, um, you know, Martin Luther King, I, I, I hadn't turned 16 yet. I was 15. I was 15 when Martin Luther King was assassinated, okay? Um, you know, I had not, it changed a lot for me because it made me reject all the stuff that I'd been hearing about if I was the, you know, the, uh, study hard, all that other stuff and everything. I did those things, but it really changed the way that I thought about stuff. You know, see, I think that the 60s was this, was, was that there's no comparison no, there's to true. the 60s there's to true. say anything that's come along since then, you know, and so I don't know if it's so much that, you know, the uh, depression generation or the generation before that, the World War One generation moved out of our way as much as, you know, events necessitated a younger, a different approach and everything, because see, there was some old dudes and everything, old women and everything, you know, that, um, you know, we grew up with this reverence for folks like Queen Mother Moore. Oh, yeah. And everything, you know, and I'm saying that kind of stuff and everything, you know, um, young people who were flocking to Mr. Michaud's bookstore on oh, 125th man. Street and everything. Oh, see, yeah. I think that one of the things that's happened, see, I think one of the things that's happening now, okay, is that um, they're really, that other than, uh, and let me just say this, this is gonna probably blow you away. I also think another thing that's really screwed stuff up is social media. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because, you know, um, when you ask where black lives where, where's black lives matter, okay, how do you possibly have a national movement that has co cohesiveness and stick to itiveness? If you don't have a centralized leader, hierarchical leadership, I think it's you know, possible. But I don't. Not I, 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 don't see, I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible at all. And I think that the, you know the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, in the sense that when you look at what's happened to you know, when you look at what what's happening to the women's march, mm -hmm. when you look at what's going on with Me Too, when you look at you know Black Lives Matter, when you look at any number of, of look movements that have generated. Now see, and see, and, and, and see now here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here's the difference, because. The, you know, and, and see, and the thing that people always put up, you know, to counter the thing about sort of the the detrimental effect that social media has had in terms of ongoing organized struggle is they always want to point to, say, the relative success of the right to things like Stormfront, you know, and the, uh, you know, and the um, organized right. And see, they say the word and don't realize that, that that's the difference because they always throw the term organized in there. Mm -hmm. See, when you look at when you look at the right, when you look at groups like Stormfront, when you look at um the you know the um or, you know the neo Nazis, these are folks who have social relationships with each other. They meet, you know, they they, they party together, mm -hmm. they eat together, they 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 sometimes even moved into the same neighborhoods together and everything, you know. Yep. And so they developed social contacts okay, I, and everything I, I, that sustain the movement. That's something that's a problem. But also be, for the be, left. because they but they have they also that I don't want to say their tent is small, but their tent is small. They can identify each other. Sure. And, and, and as 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 Tariq, as she would say, they're on code. You know what I mean? Now here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, let me segue to this now. I've not, it took too long to get to it because, you, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm involved heavily with the with the Ados movement, mm -hmm. the American descendant of chattel slavery uh, of movement. And the interesting thing about that there is that they're, they're, they're my political head. I take my 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 uh, virtual marching orders from Yvette Cornell and uh, and Antonio Moore. Right? That's my virtual marching orders. Political virtual marching. Have you asked, have you asked, have you asked yourself? Oh, if you notice the the what's the word for the coincidence that isn't a coincidence 
that they are also members of the black elite? Well, I don't know if I don't I don't I don't deal with the black elite. Maybe I'm a member. Of, I don't know. Actually, I'm not, that's not true. Uh, let me put it this way. I don't I don't know what that means. I don't know what you just said. I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you. Be, 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 but, but before you get to that, yeah, just just before you you, can, you can say what you want. You know, they've been educated. Blah blah blah. blah, 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 blah Tariq also is a member of the black elite. If you want to put it that way, but be, be because of him, a lot of the stuff that with that that young people know now just revisit people that. Tariq is nothing but a, a First World Alliance, you know, person. You know, we we, we had to go to First World Alliance to, to get what Tariq has given everybody. You okay. see what I'm saying? Simple yeah. as that. You know what I mean? In fact, um, and let me meander for just a second. And I know September 1st, I think it was September 1st, 2015, right in this very same apartment, I had a sit down with James Small. I had an interview with James Small, right? And we had this long conversation because I had just come back from, I, just, I was in South Africa, and I got this whole hopped up thing, and I, I needed a clan affiliation. I went through this whole weird thing. This is 2015. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need a clan name. Blah, blah. And we went back and forth what the name should be, blah, blah, blah. And he said, he just likes black African Americans. Went through this whole thing. Less than a year later, less than two years later, this whole ADOS movement comes up. But if you listen to that thing, everything that James and I talked about, we went back and forth on, was, he was saying, he was, and he said, he had been talking for 20 years, that we need a, 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 an identification for our clan, our tribal, because we're an amalgamation that came, they came from all over Africa, all over the place, we're a total amalgamation, plus there's America, I mean, my lineage, my, my great grand, my, my great grandfather is, 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 is this Gullah, same as, as mm -hmm. James, but my great grandmother is full Mohawk, you know what I mean? So our amalgamation is totally, but our, our experience going through from, from the, the, I want to, I want, I want, I'll leave before child support. from child slavery through antebellum through Jim Crow all that whole there's a certain lineage there and so but but Yvette and and Antonio came about that that James and I were struggling uh, a year before they started their their thing was what's we was talking about lineage in other words we're not we're not describing a people we're not putting a color on them or we're not Negroes or or, or or blacks or colors whatever have you what's your lineage because anybody could be a Negro you know what I mean mm -hmm. in, in the world anybody could be black you know anybody could be whatever but specifically what's your lineage did you go through this particular thing and if you have this lineage that means that this 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 bodes for something else, something else. That means that now you can make a claim against the people that forced you into this now, that affected your lineage, being the United States government. You know? And that is also different than what happened before the government was formed. So even these people that came from, through slavery from 16, 19, you know, up until 1776, that's a whole other claim. You can't claim against the United States government. <laughs> Because you can't have a government because there was no government. That was a, then you have to claim against what the the the, the ships the the the, uh, the what do you call the insurance companies <laughs> or whatever. And it's a, like, so it's a weird thing that we have to go through as as uh, black people that, does, that that have this lineage going through going through America right up through the civil rights era. And then after then we have this whole other thing. Now everybody's trying to be black because we have so many benefits. Well, we, everybody's trying to be black. You know that's what this hell idea is. Thing. Now tell me about this elitism that you're talking. Oh, no, I, I, I pointed that out to simply to say that at the end of the day, and you know, to say that someone is a member of the elite, to say that someone is educated, to say that someone has, um, you know, has privilege, is not a negative. Mm -hmm. I've pointed it out to say that historically, if you look at um, ethnicity and national movements, they are functions of the elite. They are functions of the middle classes and everything. Um, you know, uh, Condoleezza Rice's, um, and, and I'll make this relevant in a second. You know, mm -hmm. Condoleezza Rice's um, parents and grandparents were uh, college educated. Um, That's right. She is a solid member of that black elite That's in, right. uh, in Birmingham and uh, went through discrimination, mm -hmm. But not the same discrimination, you know, that say somebody like, um, like me, you know, like the, well, I mean, no, no, <laughs> no Rose problem. Parks is not in oh, yeah, uh, okay. you know, Birmingham. She's in Montgomery, but mm -hmm. you know that someone, you know, of the class status, you know, of, of say Rosa Parks did not, um, or or just the, any any of the domestics or any of the you know black handyman or or or, or, or whoever, and so there was a group of uh, you know of black people. You know, uh, small entrepreneurs, you know, the funeral home directors, definitely the mm -hmm. preachers, That's right. you know, who mm -hmm. um, Insurance were people. able to make money mm -hmm. from the forced segregation That's because right. they exactly. had a mm -hmm. 
captive market. Exactly. And not all of them, but a significant number of them lost as a function of desegregation. Yes. yes. And so, again, I'm not demonizing them. Mm. I point that out to say this, that my um, mother's family is, on mother's side of the family, goes back in Philadelphia. My father's born here, mm. but his people are Jamaican. His mother, father, Jamaican. Mm. So I've got that dual, uh, I don't, you know, I, I, the first time I went to the Caribbean was, I was 20 years old, 1972. Um, I've never identified as a Caribbean because I'm born and raised here. Uh, and other than some, the hodgepodge of cultural attributes, food, you know, and music and other things that are part of who I am. Okay. You know, I can't claim Caribbean, you know, heritage. Hold on just a second. You say your father, your, when did your father come to the States? No, my father was born here, but he his born parents are born in Jamaica. That's right. But, 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 but he's Jamaican. But okay. he was born when? Uh, uh, 1920? Uh, 30, uh, 1930. 1930. Okay. My point is this, right? When he came through, right, he was still... Had he still had to experience this lineage, this lineage that I'm talking about. This lineage thing didn't break down. We didn't have this full fledged uh, 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 until like basically, I would say the 90s. Until mm -hmm. we have these folks that are now coming in that are sort of elitist that are, that are I don't want to say discounting, but they're just trying to say, oh no, but we're black too. We're black too. No, you're not black the same way. You know, because because you could argue that 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 a Marcus Garvey is not ADOS, but he well, he's an ally to ADOS because he's fought the struggle. We can argue that your father right is not is your father is not ADOS, right? But he fought the struggle. But you are ADOS because you, you see him see well. You are. I understand. I understand. Because this lineage that. has to do with this with with, with, with what you're trying to to beat on this beast. Because a lot of these folks, a lot of these movements that came about, remember that even the Condoleezza Rice. Uh, that's why I try to not do the white white person as well as the mentality. The countries, the view. If you're educated at Sanford or you're teaching, you definitely in that white mentality thing. There's no way you can you can you you, you can get away from that. You know. See, I'm I'm, see, I'm saying this. When I see when I think of identity, and I think of who I am, and I think of where my loyalties are, I see myself in the same spirit as all of the uh, uh, African revolutionaries that I yes. supported, you know, in the 60s and 70s. Yes. You know, I'm as much a child and student and uh, and and kin to Neto mm -hmm. and Monlane and uh, Amakar Cabral mm -hmm. and Lumumba mm -hmm. uh, as much of a child and student and kin to South American revolutionaries as much of a student and Walt, child Walter, and Walter Rodney's, kin your, of Walter Rodney's. But see, also the Danny O'Connells, yeah, yeah. you know, from, you know, 19th century Ireland. Okay, you know, this is now. See, and, I'm, and when I say that, I'm not dismissing. And for a minute, you know, the fact that not only am I black American, but that's where my loyalty is, though, and, and the people who look like me and have the same historical experiences I do are not my kin. No question about that. But see, the part that I can't get with, you know, and I'll just say this straight up, is that, um, you know, back, I don't remember when it was, but back several years ago, um, Henry Louis Gates and Lanny Guineer um, was sort of the... Um, uh, 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 facilitators of this okay. conference, I, I believe it was at Harvard, yeah. uh, where what it is is they were lamenting the yeah, fact it that it appeared though the Ivies yeah. were uh, favoring uh, black kids from mm -hmm. West Africa That's and right. from the Caribbean right. over black American kids. And how the Ivies, and see, and then they went the next step and said the Ivies would rather, That's right. you know, bring them. The you docile, know, the docile. You, you see, they were being and, docile and because see, they weren't and, citizens. And, and see, I, you see, and, and my thing is, <laughs> the only thing 
that might possibly argue for that is the immigrant is the visa status. That's the only thing that might argue for that. And the fact that if they kick you know pitch a fit and everything, you know, then what it is they could be sent back. But see, that's, that's right. not the way these they framed it. That's not the way they framed it. But that's the, the way, reality. That's, they, 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 the way they, they framed right. it. But see, the way they framed it was um the idea that what it is is that just out of um and see, the thing they didn't do is they didn't talk about the fact that look we know that Nigerian Americans are the most successful immigrant group, you know, in America today, bar none, bar none. Okay, the Nigerians and Americans that claim you know, that no, wait, wait, you have to qualify okay. this. The Nigerians and Americans that have come since the 1990s, right. because the ones that are coming over are the ones that that, that are basically beating up on their own people. They're, they're not the ones that we're we, we, we can Sarajevo. They they were not they're not they no those these are the ones that they have they they have maids and whatever have you they have education and they're Granted. the ones that's coming over Granted. and that is the difference. I raise it though, I understand that. I raise that to say this that when I see a kid from well take I don't have to be theoretical. My wife's niece, mm -hmm. okay, born in the born in the Caribbean. Came here, you know, she's got a, uh, I, don't th I don't think she's a citizen yet. I know she had a green card. Her mother's a citizen. I'm not sure that she has a citizenship yet. I know she has a green card. I know she's working on citizenship. Um, you know, same age as my youngest, both of them in college. Um, that child studies 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, and she's moving for black excellence. Yep. I, see... Let's go back to something we were saying earlier about the '60s and everything, because it because it's relevant. You know, I think that if the that if the if I think if black boomers who made it and thrived mm. failed, we failed because what it is is we tried to shield our children from some of the stuff that we went through, True and we sort of forgot that at the end of the day, you know, what's the definition of nigger? You know, the black PhD who just left the room. Mm. See, you know, and so what happened is because I can't count, let me tell you, I can't count how many young black folks, you know, that I know whose parents, you know, boom, my age, boomers and everything, you know, um, you know, or, you know, or early, early, early hip hoppers, if you want to say that, you know, that, 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 that the baby boom ended anywhere from 63 mm -hmm. to 65. So I'm talking about people born, you know, in the throughout the 50s, into the late 50s, and maybe as late as 65 or 66. Um, they, what happened is their children, um, Mediocre, um, hand out all the time, you know, and what and, and, and where the where we failed, where well, as their parents we failed was we called ourselves giving them everything that, that that we could give them so that we they didn't go through what we went through, and I don't think I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But then the other side we didn't do, we didn't prepare them for the realities, you know, but of, of the, the world out there. But and so what it is, it's like here, here's this. Why do my children need affirmative action? If, you know, the bottom line, I'm just going to put it out there. Why do my children need affirmative action? Because okay, my children, my children are supposed to be the best and the brightest because they had all kinds of opportunity. They grew up, they came up with parents who had a couple of dollars, parents who, you know, had graduate degrees. The parents who had traveled the world, parents who could take them around the world, parents who could expose them to everything, never went a day hungry, never went a day without a roof over their head, never went a day with, um, you know, in fear of what's going to happen the next day. You know, we're going to have a place to live. Are we going to have food? Am I going to have clothes? You know, and so all the environment was set up for them to achieve, a a you know, academic excellence and everything. You know, if I failed, I failed because I didn't do to them exactly what my, what my parents did to me, which is anything short of an A is absolutely unacceptable. OK, I hear you. Absolutely unacceptable. So that when I see, I don't need to say this, so that when I see in my uh, sister-in-law's how home, her telling her daughter, anything under an A is unacceptable, OK, see, these people are just, uh, you know, a couple. Of, I think I might have mentioned this is the first time we talked. You know, these people are just one or two generations, you know, from the land. They may be the they, they may still be related to the land. One of the problems of African-Americans today is that we're too removed from the land. OK, we are the most pro African-Americans are the most proletarianized people, you know, in the, you know, on the planet. Consequently, we 
you know, look for, you know, we, see, we are, um, and this is generalization, but it, it's old, true. We are um, paid vacation people, you know, and overtime people. And, um, you know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things. You know, we are, um, you know, are break people. You know, it's like, okay, I'm employed. I get my 30 minute break. I have my paid vacation. I, you know, get double time, you know, on Saturdays and, you know, it's a dime and a half on Saturdays and double time on Sundays. And one of the things that that does to folks is it takes the edge off. It's the same thing that has the edge off the general American working class, such that, you know, the American working class, that's, that's why true unionism is going down. You know, how people have forgotten how unions, you know, are the result, you know, called, brought about the paid vacation, the eight hour day. It's like, why in 2019 would a fool, whether black, white, or whatever, not want to be unionized and everything? We've forgotten that stuff. We've gotten too comfortable. The difference is that those folks from the diaspora, those West Africans, those Caribbeans, everything, you know, a lot of the folks that are coming from, you know, South Asia, a lot of the folks that come from East Asia, quiet as is kept, they are starving. They are still hungry, and it gives them that energy for academic success, a lot of their kids. And, then, and the, I don't want yeah, to see those... They, they, I, I, listen I to what you're saying. The academic success here. Yeah. Why can't they do it over there? That's the big question. Because the institutions are here. That, see, that, that's the point. Who built those, those institutions? Country, see, who those built country, those institutions? Those countries are underdeveloped how, how, because we are, we are developed. We no, built... How did they, we, you know what we have on the backs of those people. That's No, no. We took the... We built what well, we say have we like on Americans. the backs of those no, no, people. No, no, no. We, the, I'm trying to tell you something else, right? You say you say the the, the, you know, the, the uh, our people had to no, but guess what? The same at the same time, white society, white society had already taken our wealth and then and then the stuff that we we should have been way far ahead. All that stuff when they was taking taking our land, whatever. How can we we should have much more land when they taking all all these one of the interesting things about about Adolf is that because it. First of all, it's a totally black movement, right? Yeah. But but we're informed. We're informed by Antonio Moore, which gives us the data of how we how come we only have this many dollars and they have that many dollars. Because the reason I have that many dollars is because they took it from us. Yes. And then that thing has been built and been built. So even as we it, it, it want excellence over here, they already have excellence too. They they're they're worse off than, and and they're basically eating off of our uh, uh, excellence we 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 already developed. And when these other folks come, they're eating off of our of excellence that we that we that we pushed in. And because because they're coming over here for something that something that we should be benefiting off of instead of developing it over there. You know what I mean? In other words, but we they can't develop it over there <laughs> yes, because they can. because America the same. It, look, it may be, it may, <coughs> yes, it, it may can. be that the grandfather and the great grandfather and the great great grandfather had their boot on our neck. But now it's that great grandson, and it's the same boot on our neck and on their neck. Let me do this another one. Okay. I have, I it's, had a, you can't separate them. It's the I same a, thing. I had, a, I, have, I had a, a, a friend, an acquaintance, you know. Uh, well, anyway, he, uh, white guy, right? This is a while ago. And he lived in a very big house. It was all, not say dilapidated, but it was it was like, you know, the film Sophie's Choice. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, that film was filmed in this neighborhood, these really big houses. He's a trust fund baby. Okay. He didn't do nothing. All he had to do is read all day. You know? That's all he had to do is just read. He didn't have to do no work, no nothing like that. He had to read. And now you, if you take a, he was he was all right, but you take a whole bunch of other people that read all day, they can read and plot and plan and, and do the banking system to keep on screwing and, and getting and 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 doing what they have been taught by their grandfathers how to steal from from the downtrodden. I'm going to say the downtrodden now. Okay. Let me leave. Let me leave everybody else alone. Okay. Let me leave these the, the people that just came after 1990. Here, they kept on. Okay, first we burn them out. Then we have this. We we buy this politician and make sure they can't do this. Da 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 da. So when it comes to a particular point, they have all the wealth that they took, that they stole from yeah. us. Our job was to to as to as to get, for lack of a better term, to get those reparations to, to say, oh no 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 no, sorry, this is this is no 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 this this was wrong. What what you did, you know, you was wrong when you did it, and so now we come in and say, now we got to make an adjustment. 
that's 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 all I'm saying, right? Because we could we could have how come we don't have how come we don't have those gap years that they that they, that they had for 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 decades? How come somebody like Donald Trump can 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 come in you know after us? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, and, and you you know that that whole story. I don't know. Let, I know so let, 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 let me give you, let me get better with. I'm doing I'm doing an audio drama at the uh, uh, on next Saturday. It's quite interesting because the the the, the part of it. It deals with Africa. And here's the thing. I wrote this thing a long a while ago. So it's a very short uh, piece. And what it was, this is before Mugabe got but got uh, deposed. Um, what it was is a, an account where Rob Mugabe, who, you know, uh, anyway, he goes to he goes to the palace, Buckingham Palace, knocks the door. Ding, 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 ding. Queen opens the door. Hey, Bob. Hey, you know, you know, Miss Lizzie. How you doing? Hey, remember, remember we did? We had that little party and we danced and everything. We caused a scandal and whatever. Yeah, yeah, we were good buddies. But look, I'm here for. I'm, 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 I'm just changing a little bit. Just for, but here's the essence of it. Hey, you know, you know when we, when you get all those 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 diamonds and and you know the free, free jewels for your crown and all the rest of stuff and you know all those artifacts that you got to put in, your, in the museums and they go around the world and making money for you whatever. Well, I think there was a little problem with the with, without the language thing. We had a little language problem. We weren't giving them to you. For you to take it, <laughs> then we were leasing it to you. you. Oh no 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 no! We don't want it back because you got a good system here. You know you can protect them with everything that. But you know, you owe us to, and you know we still we still leasing it. So you still owe us. You know all that. You know, and once that we want back, yeah, we want back finally because the tourists want to see that. We want to see, we want to see that big diamond that you got out of the, the the big hole in Kimberley. So we 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 need that back there. But you know you can keep it. Back. But you know, so you know, and you got it. You got it. That's all this is about. I don't, have, I, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. The but Walton you, family, you, no, see, here, here, the Walton family is worth north of $170 billion. This is six each, people. Yeah, this and, is six and, people. And each one of them, and, each one of them, or, or, and the grandchildren, or the children, yeah. all got billions, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's six people, north of 170 close to 180 maybe. Maybe, maybe even more since last time I checked, okay. There is enough money and enough wealth in that 1% to do all of this, mm -hmm. to do all of this, you see. And I don't believe that I have a claim. This is just me. For me, this is for me. I don't believe that I have a claim that supersedes or should be put in front of the claim of those young women in those fact in those Nike factories in Indonesia. Okay. I want to see both of us compensated. Well, you that's see, good. because the enemy for me, is see, is see here, is see that's where the international thing take comes into place, and that's where the interconnection is. See, the you know the ag you know the ag agribusiness. Every business that has robbed, um, you know, the Caribbean, you know, that's robbing Central America, that's robbed, you know, that, that impoverished my wife's family, you know, to a very great degree because of NAFTA. See, all of that stuff, okay, is inseparable from what those same corporations, some of those same people with interlocking, you know, with, with this one, I'm on this board, I'm on that board, you know, I've got, you know, 10% of my fortune comes from this one, 10, 5% of my fortune comes from that one. Okay, all that stuff is interconnected. See, it's the I'm same agreeing. fight. It's the same fight. No, 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 no. I it's agree. the same fight. That's right. That's my point. There's, there's a spear. And, and I'm trying to say to you right now that Eidos is the tip of that spear that can push through. That doesn't mean the rest of the spirit doesn't come through and do what they, they need to do. And let, 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 um, I had a, I had a thought. Let me try, to, try to, to 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 do this another way. Let me put it this way. Okay, Andrew Yang has this thing about giving a thousand dollars or whatever, <laughs> whatever have you. I'm no problem. Wait, 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 I go, Andrew. Love your idea. Let's 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 do this though. Hey, let's do this, yo man. What we want to do is just to show you how this thing can work a little bit better, right? Those people who identify as ADOs, I'm not talking about the Indonesian, but those ADOs people, what you're going to do, we're going to give them $1,000, they're going to give everybody else. I actually want you to give them you know, $3,000, but we will leave that out. But what we're going to do, coupled with this, that you're going to give a, a debt jubilee to ADOs. Nobody, everybody's, everybody's going to get the $1,000, including the ADOs, but we also get a debt jubilee. Go from there, or I would say, or I would, I could do it another way. 
everybody, you want to give this $1,000 so it'll work really good? Deb Jubilee, for everybody, Eidos, oh, we get an extra $2,000, you know, in our, <laughs> in, in, in our thing for you know, whatever it is. I'm trying to say this. We keep on looking at it, and so we keep on looking at these things in such a way as my, my framing of this, when I look at stuff, I only see stuff that, that is, these are easy solutions that I, everybody can say this. I just, I just gave you, I just gave you a something that I know about that can work, Dead Jubilee. Okay. Dead Jubilee, uh, uh, along with your thousand, with your thousand dollars. So instead, okay. of me, instead of me attacking Andrew, like, oh, that, I don't know if that's going to work. Say, hey, Andrew, great idea. Let's do it. And with eight else, you give us a Dead Jubilee. Now, how come no one is saying that? I'm no, I'm no genius. It's not a bad idea, actually. No, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to say it because I'm saying it. I'm just trying to say I am no genius. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not the smartest cookie in a in a, in a ten count ten k uh, bag. But my point is, if I can think of that, then where what, what, what are all these times? Where are all these leaders who who have this? They're reading the same things I'm reading. I'm not. I'm you know. I, I graduated the Theodore Ross High when I was graduating <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt High School. They had they had the academic, they had the general, and then something else, the diplomas. I wasn't the academic diploma. The I got the general diploma. So I'm no smarter than anybody else. So if I can come up with this, how come you get all these economists? I mean, I listen to Max Kaiser all the time. Well, you know the reason they don't come up with it is because they don't want to upset the apple cart. Okay, now we're talking. They don't want to upset the apple cart. I'm capitalism not. is based on in, 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 in inequity. You can't have capitalism without that gross inequality. But that's you what can. I'm trying to say. I'm not even upsetting the apple cart with this. I'm just, I'm adjusting the cart. I'm adjusting it. Because I'm even going further back. When you, when I, I, again, remember we, we, we talked about, I'm saying Eidos has a claim against the United listen, States government. Listen, let me say, for that, there's other claims. I'm going to hit you with a biggie. I'm going to hit you with a biggie. Hit me with a biggie. Hit you with a biggie. Remember, I'm not that smart, about, so I might no, not no, be no, able no, to no, deal no, with no, this. Hold on now. How about the fact that one of your big obstacles in the way is going to be that what you're proposing is unchristian? Oh, great. I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, wonderful. I have. I, I, I was thinking about this. This is We're sympathetical because I was thinking, just as before you said I was thinking <laughs> about this. That's unchristian, brother. Wait a second. No, no, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is, I can't believe this. Man, the, the Lord must like you or me or somebody <laughs> in this room. Remember, I said this this debt due is to the United States government who came about in 1776, whatever mm -hmm. it came about, right? Now, remember, the slavery was from, at least that we know here, from 1619 to, so between 1619 and British speaking American. Yeah, right. So, hey, that means we also have a claim against not only the shipping people and not only the, 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 the insurance companies, you know, and all the rest of the people, but also the first corporation, the Catholic Church. We have a claim against the town. They're the ones that put that brought those papal bulls. And remember, I, I was traveling when they when when they when they when they they received. Oh hell, the we pap got a claim against the Southern Baptists. That's my because my point. Because they came about to That's support my, slavery. So then, when you, you say know? it's unchristian, I'm trying to say. No, it's very Christian because see, it, that, 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 that's my point. Let me tell you what I, what I, why I quipped, okay, about it being any any Christian. You know, there's that moment in you know this, in, 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 you know, it, it's it's coincidental. You know, but there are no coincidences. You know, uh, there's a moment in uh, in Harriet when uh, uh, Curtis Vonnie Hall, who plays black ministers, so only black minister, is you know is reading to the slaves from First Corinthians. You know, that all slaves be obedient to your masters in all things, this, that, the other, you know, as a way to, and of course, the slaves are kind of looking at him like, huh, you know, and the whites sitting around, you know, sitting like around, yeah, you know, good, 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 you know, good, yeah. you know, whatever, you know, they give a good, good, good sermon and everything, you know, and of course, you know, you come to find out, of course, the movie that he's, you know, that, that he's doing, that, that that's the image that he has to give and that that's what he's got to say as a minister mm -hmm. so that under the radar he can do this other stuff he's doing in the movie. I don't want to do any spoilers but what about the parts in the New Testament that talk, that, you know, that use, are used to justify stations in life? You know, what about, you know, the parts of okay. scripture that say, okay. you know, you know, where, you know, you know, where uh, 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 Yeshua is, um, you know, is in the garden, you know, waiting for the Romans to come yeah, yeah, in yeah, and yeah, his yeah, disciples yeah, 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 were asleep and he says they are in the assume, world, but not of the world. And we need you know, all the things that have been used to justify class oppression, used to justify white supremacy, used to justify the oh, fact that the rich should 
should stay rich and that if oh. you're you know if you're a chimney sweeper you should try to be the boss of the factory just can I be call you the professor? best chimney sweeper can that I you call possibly you can be we're going up against all of that can stuff I, can and I everything call you, you know professor? it's unchristian professor ronald tyson <laughs> let me explain something to you you know, everything, especially in academia, is built on something else, built on something that's supposed to be fact, right? So you asking me to argue about some fictitious book? Well, I no, know, well, I'm not dealing with no... Oh, hey, if, you, if, if, if you're going to do with I'm a book... Not, I'm no, not putting <coughs> any value all I'm trying in the to, stuff that is... That Curtis Marley Hall said I'm in some movie? Saying, I'm, what I'm saying is this. I'm, I'm saying... saying <laughs> I'm saying that even if what you de we're describing here is fair... Not only does it run counter to all of the, uh, all of the mechanics of think. capitalism, I don't care. It, it runs against the spirituality. I don't as well. care. I didn't say we should care. I don't care because I, 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 I didn't, I, I, I didn't reveal something. I didn't reveal something. Like I said, Ados is my political hat that I have on right now. I, I hang out with the Foundation of Black uh, Black Americans. It's it's it's, it's, it's a good thing because I like I like the I like the way it sounds. But my code, my Bible, if you will, is the code book that's put out by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. If you put out your Bible, I'm going to pull out Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.'s comp comp compensatory concept, and then we're going to look at, you, you turn to your thing, I'll turn to Mr. Brother, Neely Fuller Jr., brother, and, I, and, I, and I'll look brother, at that, and then we can compare, we brother, can compare the two. I look words. like somebody who would pull out the Bible on anybody? <laughs> no, 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 no,
slept with a woman other than his wife. You know, David, Solomon, all these people, you know, in Matthew 1 in the New Testament are put in the same lineage as Joseph, you know, the father of Jesus. I say that to say this, that where did the idea that a sinner can't be of God and do God's work ever come from? For the evangelicals, they believe that as long as there are no abortions, as long as Christians are allowed to run stuff, as long as we get as close to theocracy as we possibly can, as long as gays are taken out and murdered, yeah. you know, they don't care the vehicle by which that stuff is delivered. And so as long as somebody is delivering that stuff to them, okay, they will support that person. They will see that person is sent by God, even though the person's a liar and all that other kind and of stuff. They are, they also the believe, relevance yeah. that it has for what we're talking about is this, that the idea of feeding the hungry, taking care of the children, um, you know, clothing the, those without clothes, you know, uh, carrying a person with no feet and all of that stuff, maybe it may, may be in a book. They don't care about that. That's right. You can always, you can always section a book. You can, you, can you always section a duopoly thing, you you know? a, a dual kind of thing. But that's why the book, the book means absolutely little, not, a little, little to me. It's, 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 it, they have some really good stories in there. Some, story, <laughs> some good structure for stories. Since I'm a, uh, I'm a playwright, it's a good structure for the story. But they also, remember, the overall thing is they're waiting for, they're waiting for Armageddon or whatever. They're waiting for the nuclear. And they all, everybody's working for this nuclear winter because they want to fulfill the prophet. They want to self-fulfill the prophet prophecy of, you know, there's stuff, a couple of nuclear bombs, nuclear went to everybody dead, everybody got somebody. Because they all believe they're going to happen. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to or say. The they, or, and or, or, or the other fine. version. But I can't, I can burn myself with what they're doing. One of the things that's upsetting me, and this, let's call it the age of Trump, is that we spend so much time wallowing in, in for or against Trump. Which means that we spend all our energy, our economy, if you will, our energy, you know, dealing with that when we when we, we could be building whatever we're supposed to be building over here, which is oh, what I agree. we're doing, you know. So that's that's all. Well, that's why our thing. See, that's why our thing has to be separate from the liberals and the neoliberals who are all upset okay. about the Trump era. That's why our thing has to be okay. separate. Okay, here's here's the latest revelation that I have for my little old dreaming, daydreaming, night dreaming, whatever dreaming brain, right? Everybody's, and what people have been talking about for years about a third party, third party, third party. To me, what's, and now I'm going right back to Ados, what happens is black people, we are the third party. I mean, we know, we, I know a lot of people say, oh yeah, we, we know that. No, when I say we are the third party, what I mean is just the strategy for Ados, like I said, I take my marching orders from, from Vivek Gono and, and, and Tony Moore as a strategy. Don't, don't get me wrong, because we've had a lot of strategies throughout history. And what it is, first of all, you deal with down ballot. I just finished voting in Virginia. So that's where I'm registered, right? And here's what I did. Uh, they had the, the, the they had the uh, uh, the state senator. Uh, he was a Democrat, and, he, and his his opposition was a, was a uh, was a uh, an independent. There was no Republican there. At least the area that I was voting in. And then we had the assembly person. I forget whatever. He 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 was um, he was voting. He was against a Republican. Whatever. Then he had the water commissioner, and he had somebody else voting unopposed. Uh, unopposed. So what I did. Since I knew that state senator was was uh, was going to win because he's Democrat, right, against an independent, right, I voted I voted for the independent, right. Then when we got down to that 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 Democrat against Republican, I voted for the Democratic guy, right. The water commissioner, right, I wrote in ADOS. This other one wrote, that, that was running unopposed, I wrote in ADOS. So now what happens? Think about this. The point down, down, down. If you if you're living, if you vote, say for instance, in New York, and you know that Donald Trump is going to win, and you're black, right? You know that Donald without you, black, you know, you know he's going to win. Then you don't, you don't, you don't vote for for uh, whoever, whoever that, that you know whoever's going to be Bernie or whoever's going to be. You write in Ados in New York. Now if you're in some sort of swing state and it matters to you. And you have something about Donald Trump, then you can you can vote in whoever is going to be the Democratic person. But down the line, you write in whatever, and if there's some sort of you write in ADOS. And if, if every ballot, every black person is someplace on their ballot, they can write ADOS. They can do a write in ADOS, either it's an uncontested thing or it's, or it's a thing where it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? You write in ADOS, then all of a sudden the political establishment says, "Whoa." There's a bunch of people that have, have some sort of weird consciousness that we got to start dealing with them because up until now, they just totally ignore us when we are a third force. Let me just say this. You know, see, I've held for the longest period of time 
that one of the things that now, mind you, 2016 was a different situation. And what I'm thinking may have been much more relevant in the 60s going into the 70s. I think, you know, you, we make an argument that, you know, by the 90s and everything, it may have been played out. It certainly isn't applicable in uh, 2016. But I think that in, in 2008, I think that, you know, Obama versus McCain, you know, was the kind of thing where, for instance, what would happen uh, at the 2008, okay, what would happen if in New York City, and because of uh, because of geographic segregation and everything, residential segregation, you know, we know, and then you know, the, 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 we would know this. Let's just say that in New York City, um, McCain had gotten forty thousand black votes, fifty thousand black votes, uh -huh. sixty thousand black votes, yeah, and everything. Okay, even though Obama um, would have won. Oh, yeah, Obama would have won. won. Let's say that McCain. Let's say McCain got sixty thousand votes. They know these sixty thousand votes came from Central Harlem. North Harlem, you know, uh, okay. the, the black areas, you know, or Crown Heights, you know, black area, Queens, you know, and, and the whole nine. Um, the Republicans would have been in those neighborhoods the next day. That's right. Saying, what can we do to get more of your votes? Mm -hmm. And the Democrats would have been there the next day saying, how did we mess up? Tell us our mistake. How yeah. did 50,000 of y'all vote for McCain? That's what I'm saying. What Ronald, was that about? Ronald, look today. I'm merely updating your thing. But instead of saying voting for the Republican. Going back and forth with Democrat Republican. You, you just yeah. put ADOS. Then they still have to come to your community and say, what the? First they say, what the <laughs> heck is ADOS? And how come you didn't vote for me? They still, they still same results. Plus, now it's it's out there. Now, all of a sudden, all, you know how black people roll. You know what I mean? Hey, this was interesting. This was fun. Let's do this again. You know what I mean? Hey, who speaks for the, what, what's going on? How do you get your marching orders? How does this happen? Oh, oh, you're not, we're not listening to Sharpton? We're not, we're not listening to, uh, our, we're, we're listening, we're, what are we doing? You know, it becomes a different kind, a different kind of consciousness. I'm trying to say, this, I'm doing the same thing you than, do, but I'm just updating what you're doing. That's what I'm saying. This is more than a rhetorical question. I'm asking for a reason. Um, mainstream BS, smoke-filled back room, machine Democrat, black, Good. versus a newly arrived but qualified according to the Constitution, a uh, Dominican for a congressional seat. No worries. And what 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 are you going to do for the Ados community? As you as you do your Dominican thing, we understand. So as the Dominican are, cat is more is more in line with Ados thinking than, than back the, 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 the smoking back door the, smoke, smoke, yeah. the cigar smoking cat. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's right. I'm a Democrat. No worries. No worries. I vote for a white guy. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying, see, the problem is we don't have political consciousness. We have we 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 we, we listen. We, we we're watching. Everybody's watching the same old TV. Whatever. I guess we have we have internet sort of different. But my point is, as you as you start getting into this, believe me, my 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 sister is not going to go to no political meeting or whatever have you. You know what I mean? She's just not. She's just just not her thing. You know, she's hustling. Whatever she's hustling. You know what I mean? Now, her husband's not going to. You know, he's doing whatever he's doing. But if I say to them like, hey. You're not going to vote. Come on now. Let's let's go on down to the thing. Here's what I want you to do. <laughs> he said you don't. He said you're not interested in. You know what I mean? You write in Ados just for me. Just write in Ados. So now I got three votes writing in Ados. Mm -hmm. They wasn't going. They wasn't going to waste it anyway. That's what I'm, all I'm trying to say is we have to start doing something. The, 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 it, it, look, there used to be they said ten percent to start a movement. Ah, that's not true. Take three three and a half percent to start a movement. I believe that. Okay. Look at you again. Let's go to your background. Look what the Panthers did. And, and, and truth be told, truth be told, if you really look at it, the reason why the Panthers were so big was not because you always carrying guns. It's because you had all those women in there dealing with the breakfast program. That's what got you over. Now, how did you get that breakfast going? On? You, 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 uh, I'm going to say it this way. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You made those merchants give up that food. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? You don't give up the food and smack you around. You know, you basically... Uh, it, wasn't, you, it wasn't quite put that way. But. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I'm, being, I'm a little hyper bold there, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, my I, point yeah. is, but because you got that food, you was feeding the children. Who's feeding the children? The, the kids, the, the, the women are feeding the children. Yeah. That's the point. The guns are... That, that's what got you in trouble, you know, because of J. Edgar Hill. You know, I don't know. You thought you were going to shove a gun on his homosexual behind. But I don't know. But my point is, you know what I mean? That's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. What, what, what can you engage the masses to call masses with? And I am, well, I'm, I'm perverted that way because I'm, when I say perverted, I mean like, like I, hey, if we can have fun, I'm willing to have it. If it's fun for me to write Eidos in, some inconsistent thing, that's fun to me. I'm a writer. I want to write. I want. I like to write that thing down. You know what I mean? If it's fun to me that I know that 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 so and so is depending on my vote, but I know they're going to win or win, I'm going to vote for the other guy or some other guy or write something. Then I'll do that. It's fun to me. But that's me. I'm not. Everybody can't do that. See? But if enough of me's who think of the absurdity does that thing, all of a sudden people got to start paying attention. Hmm. One thing I wanted to get in was this. You know. As bad as the Trump uh, era is, um, we got to counter the sense of hopelessness that a lot of black folks have. You know, folks, this is not fascism. Okay. If it was fascism, trust me, you would know about it. We wouldn't be debating it. It would be like, you know, trying to debate whether or not, you know, there's oxygen. Okay. Because trust me, if there was no oxygen, you wouldn't be having a discussion about whether or not there's oxygen, you'd be dead. Okay. If this, if we were living under fascism, if Trump was trying to insti- insti- institute fascism, okay, we wouldn't be debating it, we'd be knowing about it. You know, therefore, the discussion has to, the, the, you know, the quality of the discussion has to change. You know, that we still live in a system where voting can change the government. Well, you know, it's, it's, I, I, and we will know the day we will know the day when voting doesn't change the system. It can't change the system. OK, we may be ping pong ball it back and forth between the Democrat and the Republican Party. And we may be tempted to say that they're just, you know, are different servings on of uh, you know, servings of different, you know, food on the same plate. OK, and I'm not going to argue against that. But the reality is, is that we still have a choice and that fascism. You don't have that choice. OK, well, I, 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 I don't want. Well, OK, I, I, I should stop and let you have the last word, but I can't. I got to do one, right, thing, right, one, right. one tiny, tiny, right. tiny, 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 tiny <laughs> thing. I understand the whole thing. But I think what's happening, what's good about the Trumper, it's not just the Trump, it's, the, it's, it's this, it's this uh, again, let's call it the, the, the media, the social media era, is that people can do some research and they can share that research with their little groups, their little circles of things. One of the things that we have to do right now, the last, I think it was- in, What are people doing research? I mean, why are we still arguing? You know, every time I think <laughs> this thing is going to die, it comes back up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not going to do the, um, you know, the deep one. I'm not going to talk about the Willie Lynch letter. I'm going to talk about I just spent several, a significant amount of time this past week responding to everything on my feed on Facebook about people, you know, that Bass Reeve is the inspiration uh-huh. for the Lone Ranger, you know, or the one about, you know, uh, you know, the, the, okay, there's a meme on social media, okay, a thing yeah, that, yeah. You know, about, you know, about uh, Charlotte Sophia. And I'm not concerned about the stuff. First of all, it, nobody hid that from us because uh-huh. I heard about Charlotte Sophia from reading A.J. Rogers' Sex and go. Race. There you go. And Sex and Race was published in three volumes in 1940, 1942, and 1944. So we're talking about, you know, that somebody, you know, that, that you put your finger on and go get the books was talking about that, you know, was talking about black blood in European royalty right. back, you know, in the World War II period. So... But here's the thing. So there's this meme online that talk about Charlotte Sophia and saying that she was the mother of Victoria and the grandmother of um, Queen Elizabeth. And, and the thing, that, it, oh, it also says that Charlotte Sophia was married to George II. Okay, it was the wife of George II. Now, Charlotte Sophia was the wife of George III. 
And she was not the mother. She was the grandmother of Victoria. And she was the grandmother two times removed. Victoria was the grandmother two times removed of, um, of Elizabeth. Now, so what it is, is people will put people see that and they see it as the way it gets framed is somebody, you know, that this knowledge is hidden from us, yada, yada, yada. There was black blood in the British royal line before uh, Meghan Markle and everything. What happens is people reproduce it, you know, yes, critically, yada, 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 the whole nine. Now, it's more than just being a stickler for history or being a contrarian to knock that stuff down and say, well, no, this isn't this is accurate. See. The danger, of the, the danger of that stuff to me is that the crap that's being put forward in the name of furthering black knowledge of black consciousness and black history. You know, another one that's got me pissed off is the stuff about uh, 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 George Washington Carver having been castrated and when he was seven years old and everything. And that's the reason why he had the I high pitched voice. And see, the, here's the thing. The level of, 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 of awareness and insight of people is so bad in this country in terms of the, the education system in this country not putting forward critical thinking and critical analysis that I've, I've, I've actually done this several times. I've shown kids the argument about uh, about uh, George Washington Carver having been castrated when he was seven years old because his master, you know, didn't want him chasing after little white girls, you know, of the house that he was employed in or working in and all this other crap. So I've shown people pictures of the adult George Washington Carver, it said, how could you believe he was castrated as a young man? Because the picture you're looking at tells you that he wasn't. And maybe one kid, now these are, these are white kids, black kids, Asian kids, whatever. Maybe one kid out of a class of 23 or one kid out of a class of 40 will say, are you talking about the facial hair? You damn skippy, I'm talking about the facial hair. Because if he, if he had been made a eunuch when he was seven years old, he never would develop tertiary sexual characteristics, so he would not have been able to develop facial hair. So the picture you're looking at is saying that this, that this myth about him being castrated at seven years old is a lie. Okay, and see, if people don't have that, if, you know, if, if there's no critical analysis skills, no ability to look at something and say, wait a minute, that doesn't lay right. And see, it's not just, say, a lack of knowledge of history, because that's a part of it. But the other thing is a lack of any kind of questioning or challenging. It's, okay, wait a minute, I was lied to about this. You're giving me a separate set of information let me do with that information what I didn't do with that stuff I believe before, and maybe look something up. Okay, let me look. Let me look at it this way. And that scares me. No, I guess it. No, well, it shouldn't scare yeah, you. Let me. Let, I, I just. Okay, we. Oh, you. What am I talking about? Come on. When, when did I see you last? What were, when I saw you last, what were we doing? Where were we? We were here. We're talking. No, about no, 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 no. Oh, okay. oh, right. Okay, with the play. Right. We? What were we watching? Uh, Ishmael Reed did a play. The education of the, the haunted, the haunting, the, uh, the haunt, the haunt, the haunt, the haunt right. of Manny, whatever that guy did, the, yeah. the guy that did Hamilton. Right. What did we learn from that play? <laughs> Thank you very much. My point is that's the job of the academics, at the professor. That is the job of the playwright. That is the job of the musician. That's the job of the poets. That's the job of the dancers. That's the job of the designers. You know what I mean? To actually find, do the real research. Correct the wrong research. So, uh, uh, sure, not, not enough people are going to see the, the haunting of, of, of the, the play that, that corrects the Hamilton right. thing, but it's out there. And, and it, can, it can travel, it can travel, and all of a sudden, somehow, somehow, it infuse enough people that my 3.5 people that can say, hey, you know? And somehow it's good. Some some newscast when they when they when they're interviewing somebody to bring it up or something like that. I don't know how it's going to get out there, but that I don't worry. I don't think about the memes that are incorrect. You know, Bass Reeves. No matter what he did, Long Range or not, there's a Bass Reeves a gun gun club in Atlanta of black of black people. Right. So. I don't care if they make a version of Long Range that has the truth, whatever they think the truth is. I know we got a gun club that's doing something right now that's, that's, that's training people to protect themselves in Atlanta. I'm more interested in that than I'm interested in the legend. Maybe it's because I'm an educator. I mean, yes. it's because, though, you know, I I believe there is something, you know, I, as naive as it sounds, I believe the truth will set you free. 
you know, Frederick Douglass talk, you know, in his first autobiographical narrative, the narrative like Frederick Douglass, an American slave, written by himself, says that the reason why the slave masters did not want the slaves educated is because you cannot keep an educated man and slave. That's right. Okay. You know, and then as he learned, as he, after he learned how to read, he began to read, it angered him because he was able, he had a new yeah. access. He not only had the experiential access to slavery, but he was able to read history. He was able to yeah. read atrocities and, yeah. all, and all of that. I'm going to paraphrase yeah. Doug, you know, Douglas. You know, see, so it's because of that that the misinformation bothers me and frustrates me because, you know, and see, what happens is when you point the truth to people, you know, there's that, I don't, I don't know if you've seen this, there's a picture of uh, some football players kneeling in the end zone of the football game. And the uh, this is only last two years now. And the little caption on it says, uh, uh, um, uh, "Cadets at the uh, Air, you know, at the uh, West Point Military Academy, you know, or m members of the Army, you know, a football team kneeling in solidarity with, um, you know, with uh, Colin Kaepernick." Now, here's the thing: stop and think about what would happen. If a member of the armed forces of the United States took a knee at the playing of the national anthem, okay, you know, it just, it, no, no one, it, it doesn't happen. Okay, it's like you know, folks don't exactly. stop to think. Exactly. And so then, what you do is you is, is you do the research. You find out no, it wasn't army. What it was was navy. It was the you know the naval academy in Annapolis. They were kneeling in the end zone with a uh, you know at, at a football game. You know of the of um, University of Tulsa. The, the name of the football team, the University of Tulsa, is the Hurricanes. And so the actual picture has them kneeling, and you can read Hurricanes in the they're kneeling in the end zone. And you see the hurricane on, on the grass. Okay, on the grass, right? Now, they were not kneeling in solidarity with um, Colin Kaepernick because, again, if a member of the uh, your armed force of the United States took a knee at the playing of the national anthem, okay, there would be severe, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, repercussions. And if you were a cadet, you would have been kicked out of the academy. Okay, what they were doing is they were t-bowing, they were praying. Yeah. Now, see, here's the thing. There's another one. You know, and all the stuff is, is related. There's another one of um, of some of, of some baseball players are uh, kneeling, some standing, some kneeling. You know, at the dugout, you have the dugout of the as the steps, and so you got some that are kneeling on the top step, and then you've got others. You know, that are you know are kneeling you know, at one knee, I should say. You know, and some men standing behind them. So the meme says that members of the 1950s. Um, you know, a uh, professional baseball team of, uh, you know, kneeling in uh, solidarity with Jackie Robinson and against, you know, Jim Crow and segregation and everything. And now maybe one reason why this one sort of jumped out at me immediately is because I know enough baseball history to know the unif what the uniforms look like. And I knew so immediately those were not 1950s uniforms. Those were maybe 1930s uniforms mm. and everything. You know, and then, you know, well, no, what, no, what it was was it was, actually, it was actually a picture of the pitching rotation, the pitchers of maybe e of either the 1936 or 1937 New York Yankees mm. is what that picture was because there's some individual was in it that were identifiable mm -hmm. you know and then if you you know if you know who that individual is you look and see what that picture might have been and like i said it was the pitching staff you know of the new york yankees in either 36 or 37 now that one i knew because of, uh, of of the knowledge that i have i've acquired over the years but see i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the things that people should be able to apply some sort of minimal level of critical analysis to to see that there's something wrong with this. Do you know that Spike Lee still pushes that stuff about um, uh, uh, Tommy Hilfiger having been on uh, the Oprah Winfrey back in 1997, you know, saying that um, he doesn't make his clothes for uh, black Americans and everything. That thing that he put in, uh, in, in the movie he did, um, Spike Lee did a movie in... Uh, which one was it? Bamboozled. Okay. Oh, bamboozled. bamboozled. Okay. And the part of the thing in Bamboozled was he changes the name. He doesn't call him Tommy Hill figure. He calls him Tommy Hill nigger. But the whole idea of a boycott against this character, Tommy Hill nigger, you know, because he's making clothes that are, you know, are, are popular for African American youth. But he said that he didn't make them for him and he doesn't want, you know, young people wearing his clothes. Mm -hmm. That's taken from 
a, a urban legend before the modern era of social media that was circulated primarily uh, uh, on email that said that uh, that uh, Oprah Winfrey on her show had a show that was you know where she w- came on Tommy wear you know and she had on Tommy Hilfiger you know on the show and then in the course of her asking him how much you know he hit up why is it the young black people you know why are his clothes so popular Tommy Hilfiger said something to the extent that he you know the fact that he didn't make the clothes for young black people yada 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 and then Oprah immediately cut the commercial and when she came back Tommy Hilfiger was gone and she had taken off the Tommy wear. Now, at the time that thing came out, both Tommy Hilfiger's people and Oprah Winfrey's people said he had never been on the show. Mm. So here you got the two people who are the principals in this thing saying that this never happened. He's never been on the show. Okay, there's a version of this you know story that puts a date on it. It puts a date on it and then it was on the show on the Friday after, uh, on, on uh, the Friday after um, uh, Black Friday, the Friday after th- uh, Thanksgiving, and I believe it was '97. If it wasn't '97, it was '98. But anyway, there's a company at the time. There's a company in Ohio that did the transcripts for all the talk shows. Mm-hmm. I got the transcript. Mm-hmm. Okay, for that show. Not only was Tommy Hilfiger not on the show, but that show. The Friday after Thanksgiving, and I'm pretty sure it was 97 now I'm thinking it through, was actually a retrospective where Oprah Winfrey did, you know, um, excerpts from all of her yeah. other shows yeah. and everything. You know, And I say that to say this, that in the it, it, even the intelligentsia, OK, doesn't do the critical analysis, right. and the critical thinking through this stuff. You know, everything from Obama, you know, in in ninety seven, you know, um, to, uh, 97, 2007, repeating, you know, the, the the statistics, you know, and the study that had been debunked by the time he cited it, talking about how in ninety seven, you know, just when he was announcing his campaign that there were more young black men in prison, you know, than there were in higher education and everything. He was citing the study from two thousand, and th- those figures were old figures, and they were debunked because the study was not done correctly and everything so that when the study came out it was it, it, it was problematic and so then seven years later he kicks it and so now do you know do you know how hard it is for me to tell my students that not only are there not more black men in prison you know than there are in uh in higher ed but that black men are 5.5 percent of the american population and also 5.5 percent of the uh you know of the college um you know population and that black women are actually in higher education in greater proportion than they are in the population okay i can't do that i'm saying this yes whoever gets the narrative out there first and is sexiest that's the narrative that they're going with that's the thing that that's the thing that's going to to become the the, the headliner if you will and they, that's part of the problem. You know what I mean? Uh, if if you have a narrative, uh, go back to your 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 your, your, your kneeling uh, your kneeling uh, foot foot football people. Well, you know, somebody wrote that out there. Everybody wants to believe it. They're going with that. The the whole thing. You, 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 and any anything that goes out there first, it gets it gets the it gets the traction. People pick it up. It's hard to debunk it after that. That's the, that's the problem that we have. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna end it there. I wanted to talk to you about something else. I wanted to get you one last thing, but I don't know if I can do it. Maybe we can make it quick. Let me start here. Thanks for this little section here. Okay. Let me just give me just a second. I'm 